Rory Models Daily Vlog. Today is the 4th of June 2015 and to say I've had a nightmare day is a complete understatement. Now, um, obviously yesterday you saw this one was on its legs, looking very forward to just pushing through with this one and finishing it off. Unfortunately, I came into a small technical hitch when we came into the oil wash. Now, um, I had read a few things online about uh, Bandai Plastics with the ATST, this kit, not liking enamel thinners. Um, there seems to be an issue on the sort of molecular structure um, that it tends to crumble. It doesn't melt. It's not like um, like with a hot action lacquer when you put it onto plastic and it physically melts it. That would be okay. The trouble I came across was I had him like this, oil wash right the way over. And because we know it won't stand on its own particularly very well, what I did was I placed it on the stand like this, put the oil wash over it and all the rest of it. Um, I put the head on just because, you know, hey, you can, and just trying to see how it's going to look and the feel, and, uh, well, it'll play with it, um, and left it, and it was literally sat here, and I was doing some other little bits of preparation work for the filming and all the rest of it, and the head fell off. And when I say it fell off, I mean it came off with a thump. Now, admittedly, it didn't have, as you can see it down here, it didn't have the laser cannons on and all the bits and pieces, um, or any of the turrets open, as you'll see in the video. Um, but it came down with enough of a bang to literally shatter. And when we say shatter, I have 37 pieces, uh, including the hip areas, these guys down here, these long ones down here, had actually shattered. One had sheared off on the rear part of the shoulder back here um, and then this guy over here had gone at the front and torn it into two. Each of those had then broken separately into multiple fractures and I've got some pictures here of it as well and um, I'm not sure I'm going to have time to on the vlog though but if, if I can edit it in you're going to see also the little bits of plastic if not you'll see on the full thing um, and it was a case of my god what's happening um, it, a little bit of panic setting because at this point it's black because it's covered in oil paint uh, and you know it's it's dripping in it um, and I'm now thinking immediately it's going to eat it it's going to crumble it's going to fall apart we're in a world of hurt here so immediately I'm trying to get it off but how do you get it off how do you neutralize an oil okay if it is some type of you know an acrylic you can put water on it wash it away and all the rest of it I can't put enamels on it because it's gonna make it worse so really what do you do so in time or tradition it was a case of paper towels jumbo brush uh, and literally trying to get as much of it off the trouble we've got is I tried to seal it all in okay because I was aware of this problem I'd read it on the internet uh, and all the rest of it and I even mention it in the video that is before this, okay? So it was a case of, I did give it two coats of clear right the way over uh, last night before we came into the paintwork and all the bits and pieces like that. Once the paintwork was done and the markings were on, I've got the Imperial markings on and the red stripe, it then had another two coats of flat, okay? So it had the XF86. That was to be in preparation for the weathering to give the pigments, scrubs, things like that, things to grip to, okay? So technically I had four coats coats on there that's great the trouble is don't forget I didn't use glue there's no glue on this kit whatsoever it is still all push tight and it is perfect I've got no problem with that the joins okay they're obviously you know the movable ones especially the ball and socket joins down here that have got all the movement in there obviously the oil wash has penetrated in there attacked those bits of plastic crumbled them away and that's where the structure had gone we also had things like the plating system on and to be honest when he fell backwards this guy back here see i'm paranoid about handling this but you might notice we've got a chunk out the back here um that part landed backwards on here and it shattered again that's how fragile it actually got with it all on so that part there that's got the shatter part that's because the uh the actual um wash got underneath it and attacked where the pin, because it has four pins, pushing the back, which holds that plate in, which keeps it all together, and it crumbled it. Nightmare, absolute nightmare, that's all I can say. Now, it's a little bit too early in the day, because this literally has only happened this afternoon, so I'm still sort of working out the reasons why, how to prevent it, and everything else like that. I have had a quick look on the net. I've spoken to some of my colleagues who are sort of in the industry as well, and things like that, and said to them about it. Um, the issue, apparently, is the plastic. It is solely to the ATST kit, so if you've got this kit, be aware of it. Just don't go near it with enamels, okay? Use your clay washes or your acrylic washes, things like that, and you should be absolutely fine. The trouble with it is, apparently the plastic is like a hybrid between your normal type of styrene and an ABS plastic. And on a molecular structure level, it hates obviously uh, any type of lacquer, sorry, enamel thinners. It actually attacks the molecules and it physically comes apart, and that's what's happened to me on this one. 
So, okay, there you go. Uh, you know, the photos you can see, it was in a million bits on my desk. What the hell do you do? Um, I've never been to kit in the last 15 years. I've always built everything that uh, I've started. A lot of it is to do with you guys, because obviously I need to finish the ones I'm working on. So it was a case of what the hell do we do? The options were, um, I'll be honest with you, I was gonna put it to one side and go and start on the Typhoons. That was option one. Uh, option two, it was a case of, right, okay, well, you know, let's think about it. Can we get it back together? Uh, initially, when I looked at it, I thought it was gonna be very difficult because as I say, you've got these joins and the way it all works and these pivoting mechanisms, it was all shredded to hell. So uh, I was thinking the chances of getting it back together are gonna to be pretty remote. Uh, I was then thinking, well, could I scratch build that entire section, detail it, and away we go. Massive job, gonna take a day. Uh, but yes, probably could do that. So that was gonna be my option to fix it. The trouble is, as I'm going through these options, things are falling off of it. I've got bits of, you know, plating and stuff like that. The feet, for instance, the covers all then let loose and they just fell off and the, the little claws, the toes, they fell out as well. And I'm thinking, it's still destroying. And I had a vision of it literally just being a pile down here uh, and all the rest of it. So anyway, it was one of those things, right, okay, what are we gonna do? We need to, you know, fix the problem. So what I elected to do was I took the parts I could apart because obviously we didn't glue it so that gave us an in uh, and we glued them with extra thin on the inside of all the parts. So I've had the legs apart and the various parts and all the rest of it up here. The, the actual turret itself, the head, it seems to be okay. It's all the other parts that go with it. So anyway, I took it all apart and we extra thinned everything on the inside and then put it back together and sandwiched it. Once it was sandwiched together, it then had another coat right the way over the top. Mainly the hip hyperbaria and the sort of femurs, I think you'd call it, uh, they've been completely glued up now. Um, it's never gonna move again, which is unfortunate because it was totally poseable. You could put it into any position. It was always gonna live on the stand, so it was gonna be in that type of pose anyway. But certainly it's not gonna move anymore now. Um, and then it was a case of having to go around and fix it. And so what I did was I went back to the old school way and I used uh, Windsor and Newton Indian ink, just put that on there and then literally I was brushing that around, which gives you the same effect of oils anyway, and managed I think pretty well to hide any areas where you can see the differences. Certainly these joints down the back here, these ones on the sides, these two here, they've had it. Um, and then obviously these at the front and then these ones down each side and down the neck, they've all had it. Uh, to really take care of it. The other problem we had, all this bits in here, all this detail along here under the sort of breastplate, they were all buggered as well and they all fell off. So, I've had a great day. No, I haven't, I've had a nightmare day. If you've been following me on my Facebook page, you would have seen a lot of that, because I was having a bit of a rant on there. So, the big thing is, is this a fault with the kit? I don't know. There's no warning on the box that says, do not use enamel paints, that's my only rant, okay? I think personally there's a bit of a cock up somewhere. I've built, as you know, the X-Wings and never had a problem with those at all. It had exactly the same as this has had, nothing fell off the X-Wing. It is obviously, I think, to do with this. Now, obviously these are new kits out, there's only so many of us that have built them and all the rest of it, but I know I'm not the only one. So just be careful if you are coming along and doing it. Yes, I have managed to recover it. Yes, it was a complete ball ache if I'm honest, but I have got there in the end, okay? So, you know, save the day and all the rest of it. Just put it this way, there's plenty of cursing going on around about half past two. In the meantime, Chewbacca is here. He's literally just had an ink wash because I'm not going near anything with enamels on this. And then what he's gonna do is I'm gonna dry brush him because he had an ink watch for the shadows and then dry brush him and then we're gonna pick out all the details. So he's ready and he's gonna be standing in the top. What this means for the build though, it can't do technically what I wanted to do. I did want to go in now and do a lot more weathering to this one. I wanted to put in chipping, um, some blaster marks perhaps. I wanted also to get in there and take care of it with some fading, um, using oils, neat, and doing things like that. I'm not going to, I'm gonna pretty much leave it here. There's a few little bits still gotta go on, but I'm pretty much gonna leave it here purely because I think that some areas are gonna be extremely weak. The plastic is ready to break. Obviously the weight of the head and everything is what shattered it in the first place. So I think if I've got hold of it and you start rubbing it, you're gonna end up with bits flying off and all the rest of it. So unfortunately, I'm gonna call it literally quits on this one uh, and we're gonna walk away from it. I am gonna do the base though. I'm gonna give it a very simple grass base on there. The same one or the same material that was on the bottom for the Sherman. So I'm gonna take care of it with that. Pop that down there uh, and away we go. But needless to say, absolutely 
absolute nightmare. <laughs> so it was one of those ones. I've been doing Bandai kits and harping on and saying how brilliant they are and all the rest of it. And then literally it's like, oh God, it's happening. And it fell apart. And I was, it was in the first time I've literally thought I can't do this. My other option of course was to get another one. I was going to get another one and do an entire legs and body and put this head onto it and then try and recover it at a later date, vice versa. So that was my only other option, but I'd have to get another one out of Japan. That's going to take a week. So luckily though, I think we've managed to save it. Ah, never mind, happens to us all. On a lighter note, for other things, today you've got the X-Wing. Uh, to be honest, as I said, I actually reviewed this before we went away, so I'm probably a lot paler. I've got shorter hair, I need a haircut still. Um, but this one is up on the site now, so go ahead, get this kit, because everybody should have one. Absolutely fantastic. You might have seen, if you're watching the live show with us on uh, Tuesday night, Steve Sutcliffe is working on one. He's got the fuselage done, and he's playing with the X-Foils, and you can hear the sound effects and the lighting. It's extremely well engineered. Steve's totally in love with it. It's just as good as the 172nd, but it's even better, because it's got more details and it is a finer kit and apparently the LED lighting especially the cockpit one work fantastically it's absolutely beautiful so anyway he's cracking on with his at the moment I would like to get on with mine but after this I'm probably gonna have a break <laughs> which I am because I do the typhoons I've ordered a couple of bits to be honest this morning first thing this morning so a couple of bits come in for the typhoons hopefully they'll be here by the beginning of the week uh, but next week I'm gonna be cracking on with those big time uh, and getting them out to you so that's it, that's about it today. Today's nightmare, okay, and everything else like that. Um, I hope you're enjoying this particular build. Make the most of it, because it's only gonna be a four-parter now. I'd originally thought of it as a six-parter with the weather in, but it's probably only gonna be a four-parter now. It might even be three, I think, after a few shortcuts on this one. But again, it is a nice kit, just don't go near it with an animals, for God's sake. So there we go, that's it for today. Hope to see you tomorrow. Uh, until next time, happy modeling.